Grace and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord, our risen Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The sermon text for this resurrection celebration is recorded in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. In the name of him who loved us to the very end. I gotta tell you, this is not how I expected to spend my first Easter here at Salem. Preaching to a big building with empty pews, letting you watch things on live, a handful of people just to make things run, and, and that's it? I got no plans for this afternoon, no family to go see. How about you? Has this virus destroyed your Easter plans? Is this how it usually looks? Is this what you would usually do? It's okay. It's not the first time Easter plans were ruined. Jesus ruined the plans for the women on the day that they came to prepare spices, anointing, a proper burial for the dead body of their Lord. But he ruined their Easter plans, and thank God for it. There was no body to prepare. They hauled all those spices for nothing because there was no body. He was risen. He had been raised from the dead. God bless those women. God bless them. They were coming to do something that they couldn't do any sooner than they had. Love and respect for God and his commandments kept them from coming Friday night through Saturday night as they were observing their Sabbath day. They couldn't do what they needed to do in the dark. Sunday morning was their first opportunity, and they came right at the break of dawn. God bless you, too. We stay apart for a while out of love and respect for the health of one another, out of love and respect for a government that is trying to do its best to curb the spread of a virus. But I know that that love and respect, will, as soon as it allows us to, it's going to push us to come together and celebrate as a body together in this building once more the, the wonders that we proclaim here today. Because although we're able to help from a distance, we know it's not the same. I look forward to that day. But there's something that brightened the day of those women, the weekend that they had to stay apart. And there's the same thing that brightens our day too, who are apart for a time. No matter where we are, no matter where we meet or how, we know, we know that Christ is alive. He is risen. We are never alone. That's what the resurrection means for us. I want you to notice how Jesus already has some plans laid for all of his people at the resurrection celebration. Him rising from the dead meant that his work of dying for our sins was finished, but it doesn't mean that our work now is done too. Did you notice what the angels told the women? There was something that Jesus had previously said back on Thursday evening, back when he was telling his disciples that all of them would abandon him, back when Peter was denying it, no, I'll, I'll never abandon you and I'll never deny you. On that night, Jesus told them that the shepherd would be struck and the sheep would be scattered. And after he died, he says that after I've been raised, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Why Galilee? I wish I really knew. I have some ideas, but I do know that Jesus was already thinking ahead for the after Easter. They weren't going to be able to sit around and twiddle their thumbs. The resurrection of Jesus had a meaning for them and a meaning for you and for me. That's what he was going to remind his disciples of as the angels told the women, go quickly, tell his disciples he has risen from the dead. And look, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. If you go through all of the Easter accounts, it's all the same. Jesus has a plan. Jesus has a purpose. He died and rose for a reason. When he would meet Mary Magdalene one-on-one -on -one that day, 
she would, she would hold on to him. She would want him never to leave. But he says, I still need to return to the Father. He's already looking forward to the ascension. He sits now on high at the right hand of God the Father and he rules all things for the good of his church. There's still something to do. Same thing that very night. He told his disciples he would meet them in Galilee and eventually he would. But it's like Jesus just couldn't help himself. He had to go. He had to meet with them that very night. The evening of his resurrection, he appeared among them. And what did he say? He said, peace be with you. And then he said, repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. They got some work to do. They got an after Easter. And what was it all about? Bringing the reality of death defeated, of sin forgiven, of hope and of comfort, bringing it to all the corners of the earth in the name of our resurrected Lord. Here's the truth that we need to keep in mind during this strange time. The virus is going to lose its sting someday. We're, we're going to get immune. We're going to make a vaccine. We're going to learn how to treat it better. We'll get to a point where people may still get it, but not in spikes of a lot of people all at once to overwhelm our hospitals. The virus will lose its sting. Its burden will become an afterthought. But everybody's talking about going back to the old normal or maybe having a new normal. I'll tell you this. The problems that we had before the virus came, they're still going to be there when it's gone. I'm talking about guilt. I'm talking about fear. I'm talking about our sin. I'm talking about our shame. Do you know somebody that's living with guilt and shame for their sins? Do you know somebody that is living under the delusion that God is dead and that there is no one to help, no one to bring hope, no one to lift them up? Those people are alone, and they are lonely. Everybody's talking about how this is this is so difficult, not being able to go out and meet with people as we once did, and, and we're going stir-crazy and getting cabin fever. We miss our friends. But for the last several years, did you know that this was already a problem? We might be sitting here and thanking God for things like phones and chats and texts and video calls, social media to be able to connect with one another, but they say that if you're my age or younger, if you're in your teens or 20s and 30s, you could have a hundred friends, you could have a thousand followers, and no generation has ever been as alone as we are. There's nobody that we can go to really talk to, to really share what's in our hearts. The burden that we feel, the guilt that we have. This is what the professionals have been saying for years. People are lonely and alone. I'll never say I don't feel it. But I will share what I do when the feeling comes. I go to my God. I go to Him in prayer. I open my Bible. And I read Jesus' very words to me, words of peace and of comfort and of forgiveness and of resurrection joy. I go there to my Christ and suddenly I'm not so alone because he has promised to be with me always. Christ, the one who died for all of our sins, will never leave us alone. Do you know people like that? Go to them. Go to them quickly. What's your after Easter look like? Okay, you can't knock on their door right now. Give them a call. Send them a text. Write them a letter. Do something. Reach out to them. Admit to them. Share with them you felt the same guilt they do. 
We all do. But there's a Jesus in heaven who's truly alive, who forgives the guilt of my sin. Their Easter plans might be to be lonely and alone. On this Easter tide, go to them. Bring them Jesus. You don't know how? You're afraid you're going to mess it up? You're afraid that the jumble of emotions is going to get you all tripped up and you're not going to know what to do? Come on. That's how it was for the women, right? I'm still trying to figure this one out. Can you figure this one out for me? What's, what's Matthew right? The women hurried away from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. How can you have both fear and great joy at the same time? Ah, oh, the perplexity of the human heart. They didn't have it all figured out yet. Well, they were afraid because Jesus had just upended their plans. Nobody there. Nothing to do. Not having all the facts, they hadn't seen them yet. They had the report, but, but could it be true? Jesus didn't tell them. Or the angel didn't tell him, wait until you have it all figured out and you really got it in your heart, then go share it. No, go share it now, friends. And if, if God is getting into your comfort zone, if he's poking and prodding as he, he calls you to repentance and you expose before him all that is in your heart and you acknowledge your sin before him, he comes and he meets you, not with words of condemnation, not with the look of shame, but words of comfort, of forgiveness, and of peace. By words of grace, you can be filled with the same joy that they were filled with, even if the fear has trouble going away. While they were on their way, Jesus appeared to them. He addressed that fear. Do not be afraid, he said. He says the same to you. You know, this account happens really close to the end of the entire book of Matthew. We're only ten verses away. Do you know how the book ends? Jesus declares all authority has been given to him. He tells his followers to go find more. Teach them to be disciples. Baptize them in the name of the triune God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey everything he has commanded. And the book ends with these words. Surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. That's our risen Jesus. His resurrection had a meaning, a purpose. There is an after Easter for us. Shall we do it? I miss you all. I really do. I'm looking forward to the day we fill these pews once again. But there's something that's connecting us even when we're far apart. It's Jesus. I want to be able to celebrate that connection here. It's always better. I want you to stay strong in that connection to him. I want you in the word. I want you tuning in to listen to the gospel being preached. I want you to be gathering together to strengthen and encourage one another whenever and however you possibly can. Because this message needs to be shared, and we're the ones to share it. Our sin, our guilt... Our shame is all gone. Christ has died for it all. Our hope, our life, it's coming to us because Jesus has risen for us. This is our after Easter. We are never alone because Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen.